everybody, Carol Abbey Gray in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, I wasn't gonna be painting on the carousel horse this morning, that was not on my schedule, but I came through here to uh, go to the laundry room to wash some clothes, and it caught my eye, and I think in the life of every artist, that's all happened to you before. You pass by something that you were working on, next thing you know, you're putting paints on the palette. Okay, that's kind of what happened, so let's go with it. I'm Carol Libby Gray in Baton Rouge, Louisiana continuing to paint on the beautiful carousel horse from an original photograph that I took in Montmartre, France, Montmartre, France, uh, many years ago. Okay, so thank you for joining me. I have a little remote here, so perhaps maybe I'll be able to use the remote and see what happens. Okay, I'm continuing to paint in the area. See if you can see that continuing to paint in the area of the ornamental uh, bouquets up in here and I have a gold on my palette so I thought I would go ahead and move up in here and try to go ahead and work in the small area right here then when I come back we're gonna go straight across the page doing this I will have enough blocked in, backed in. Uh, you know, I paint from the back to the front and from the top down. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. I don't have long to paint. It will be a short video. The colors that I have on my palette, I have a metallic, pewter, silver. Uh, uh, it's real pretty. I have a little bit of black. I have a bronze. I have a soft blue and I have a gold and pink. Okay, so let's get moving here. I'm going to dab a little bit of gold. I'm going to start right up in here. It's got a little bit of bronze tint to it. So we'll dab a little bit of bronze and a little bit of gold. And I think I will go ahead and I'm seeing now the shape that I've transferred is not the exact shape uh, how it should be. I see it's a little it's uh, it's slim at the top here, and it kind of pineapples at the bottom on the picture. Okay, kind of slim at the top, it kind of pineapples at the bottom. I have this fat. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go ahead and get some gold in it. And I always teach you to paint in the direction that something goes or flows, and it's rounded. It's contoured. So we will contour this in. And on the left side, we have some orange over here and we have some black. So what I'm gonna do, I'm making a correction with the paints. Every artist needs to know how to do this. I have videos on, in realism, on painting my Venetian carnival window to where I went in and made a correction. You need to know how to make a correction when you are painting. It's just kind of like if you were driving and all of a sudden, uh, you have to make a correction. You have to, uh, you have to be aware of how to do this so that you don't overcorrect and cause an accident. Alrighty. Well, I recognize here that uh, something is not in the shade that it should be up in here. It's uh, drawn a little too fat. I transferred on a canvas. Uh, anything could have happened. I could have lined something up wrong. It could have shifted while I was uh, transferring it. Happens all the time. Uh, the uh, skilled painter has an eye for those type of things and just makes the correction as you go along. And so when you're painting with uh, someone and you see that they're saying, okay, we're going to uh, make a correction here, valuable lesson, valuable, valuable lesson because uh, you that's how you learn. That is how you learn. Uh, that is an awesome experience. You're watching how someone uh, tra has trained their eye to recognize uh, something that should not have, uh, that should not be, and they are making a correction. Now, also while I'm on the subject of this, let me uh, uh, let you know to those that may not would know is, I pay for my photographs and I always chose to leave the uh, version of the camera in, the distortion of the camera that it's called. Okay, a lot of people try to correct that. I don't, because I paint for my photographs and I like for life to be as it is. And if someone took a photograph 
and if it's off center, I know there's programs now that you can straighten all that up, and if a column is crooked, you can straighten it, and this, that, and the other. But I always uh, just uh, use my own interpretation, and if it, uh, if it adds to the painting in any way, I leave it in. If it distracts from it, well, then I ought to take it out or correct it. But for the most part, I paint from the photographs, and I, I, that's, I believe that's how life is. Life uh, is not always edited, and nor should it be. Just like I have some, I have some videos. I'm leaving in. They're not perfect, but they're not supposed to be. I'm an art teacher. I'm teaching you how to paint, I'm not teaching you how to make videos. So anyway, here we go. Enough of that. What I'm doing? I'm working. I'm working up in here. Let me stop and see if you can see where I'm at. I'm working up in here, so I'm working right in here. I tried to line the photographs up better for you so that you could see where I'm at. Okay, I'm working on the ornamental uh, decorative um, post right here behind the face. There's one here and there's one here. The horse is the center of interest, but if you look, they're pretty much centered behind. I may actually leave this Mary girl, this post off. I don't know yet. I'll make that uh, d determination as I move along. Okay, for right now, I'm working right up in here. Okay, and what I'm going to do I have black on my brush. There is a post separating. You have two lights here. One, two, one, two. On the third light here, you'll see there is a post that goes down, a, a wrought iron spindle that goes down between the background illuminated area and the bar light here. Okay, it starts here. It doesn't go from the top post down, from the top railing to here. This is the second railing. It looks to me like it starts at the second railing. So what I'm going to do, I am going, to, here it is right here. I am going to start it right about at the light. I'm going to make it curved and uneven because the light is dancing on it uneven. Light does not follow a straight pattern. I did dab right up in there, but it wasn't necessarily making it look like a post. It was just making the background area darker. When you paint negative space around something, it will illuminate it and make it pop. Okay, you've heard me say that before. So uh, here we go. Right in here and the post goes on down through the hind leg of the horse to the top of the beautiful French bouquet. I just go ahead and just drag that ever so lightly, right in here. Okay, the area here underneath the hind leg, the two hind legs, uh, there's the horse left hind leg, and here's the horse right hind leg. I'm going to take the pewter gray color, this shade, and I'm going ever so lightly right here, and I'm going to start right at, had a little too much water on my brush, let me get that off. Going to start right at the area. There is a shadow that is created underneath the back leg. It comes up to the post and it goes down. It's the back leg, but it's the inside. It's this, it's this side, the back leg, and there is the other back leg and there is the shadow that I just created up in there. Have a little too much water. We'll let it dry. I'll go ahead and I will cast the shadow on up in here and I'll go ahead and cast it on underneath the bottom of the horse. Beautiful carousel horse from Mogmore Friends. Just go ahead cast the shadow down in here. It's darker right here. 
I have to keep reminding myself to look back at my camera so I can see if you can see where I am painting. Here's the horse's head right here. Okay, going around the ear. I'm right up above to the right of this face, right up in here. Okay, around this area is black, and uh, around this area is black, and right here I haven't blackened it in. I'll go ahead and do it with the pewter gray while I have that on the palette. And if it's a little too light, I can darken it up. I have free, no content, no copyright music for YouTubers playing. Thank you. It's an awesome courtesy. I will call it out in the video. Okay, now back over here where I initially was going to, I have this black spindle going to cast a little bit of light on it with the pewter. Going to darken back up in here a little bit, right in here. If you're starting to like my videos, I'd appreciate it if you would like them because some people are telling me they didn't even know I had the videos and I'm like, well, I was a little too scared to tell people I had videos because uh, I didn't have much content on, on them yet and I had been working in realism for many years and teaching here. So anyway, the YouTube thing is new, but uh, it's all coming together. I'm uh, pleased to uh, announce that, that it is coming together. Moving in around the hind leg. I'm gonna go ahead real quick and take this pewter that I have on my palette and dance the highlight on that piece of wrought iron. And this must be a little off center or this may be supposed to be a little fatter. because that's where I had the graphite drawn. And right here is a round area. Okay, it's a dark area on the other side of the wrought iron. So I'm gonna break the black up and add a little bit of the gray color. Okay. I do have orange on my palette. So right up in this area here, where the orange is dancing on the other side of the spindle, right in here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in on mine, right here, and right in here.
and then it kind of fades out. And while I've got this on my brush, Always looking adjacent to see if I have a color on my brush where I can use it. I had some dark color on my brush, so I can use it right in the face here. I can use it in the face. I trust you can see what I'm doing. And once I post the videos, uh, I really appreciate it if you've looked at any of the videos once I start to get them posted. Uh, give me feedback and comments on how I can make them better from a viewer's perspective. If I talk too fast, if the music is too loud, just let me know. That's what the feedback is about. I try not to point too much because I don't want to block I've got too many things going on over here. I'm trying to watch the camera. I'm trying to watch the minutes. I have 18, 26 minutes. I want to cut it off at like 20. I just wanted you to see what I was doing, how I was preparing this next area so that when I shoot the next video, I can move along. Uh, okay, so I made a little bit of progress in here. with the black that I had on the on the palette. Trying not to waste. I've got so many things going on over here. I hope that uh, once I upload the videos, I hope it's not like helter skelter and too confusing for you to realize um, the different things I'm doing because I'm doing the new thing Ford paintings. I'm doing the thing I've done for 14 years, realism painting that I'm doing today. But also I'm shooting videos and uploading them to YouTube. So that's all new because my teaching style is going to change. It's going to be online related as opposed to coming to my classes and Baton Rouge. Just go ahead and put the gold in here. Okay, now I'm gonna move along right quick. What I'm doing, 
I'm going to get back and I'm running out of time. So I'm going to go over here and I am just going to make a swipe of gold all the way down this beautiful decorative ornamental post on this merry-go-round and mow more friends. And actually, if you Google carousels, the Mo More Friends, this carousel will come up. I'm so sorry that I have not given you any type of history on it by telling you the name of the carousel. Uh, the only thing I know is it's the Mo More carousel. It's at the base of uh, the church there, up on the hill in Mo More, overlooking France. I mean, overlooking Paris, what am I saying? Overlooking friends. Okay, just moving right along. I'm just covering the canvas, getting some color on the canvas. Always, when you're painting in realism, always smooth this stuff out. You don't want to come back 30, 40 minutes later when you've made a, a base covering, an undertone, an undercovering uh, with a wash or something, and then find out that it's all caked and dried and uh, you got a bunch of bumpy areas on it because uh, uh, those of you that know me that have worked in uh, realism with me, I'm a stickler for that. Uh, caked up paint has its place. I'm doing some. Uh, I'm doing some abstract art now, and it certainly has its place in that. And I will be doing some abstract art this afternoon, as a matter of fact. Okay. Uh. I think what I will do, I, this is this is looking a little. This black here with the gold on top. This is looking a little more in the silver family. I have the pewter on my palette here, so I think I will just dance a little bit, if you will, a pewter. Along, drag it along the gold. I'll look back at the wrought iron. And maybe make a few passes of little swirls in the wrought iron. I'm going to switch to a little bigger brush. Doing a wash.
making sure you can see what I'm painting. I had thought about taking this post out, but since I've sharpened it in, I think I will leave it in. I will not second guess the decision that I made at that time. As an artist, you are confident enough to, as an artist to where if you um, see something that you should have left out, you are skilled enough how to make a correction that you can take it out at just about any time, no problem. But this is the thing that uh, sometimes the artists can second guess themselves and take things out that at the time when they made the decision to leave it in, that was the right decision. So uh, you'll learn as you train your eye, you're also training your mind, and you will learn that when you make a decision to go with it. And then you will also, like I said, you will learn that um, you will have the skill set necessary to where if you come back and you look at something from a different perspective and you think, wow, well, you know something? I, I think that might be a good idea to move this or relocate this or take this out or whatever. Well, then you're looking at it from a different perspective. And sometimes perspectives uh, open up a different perspective as we paint. So always be open. You don't want to be a stiff painter, stiff in mindset and uh, moves. You want your paint to flow freely and uh, have life. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. Okay, so uh, we've made quite a little bit of progress here in the short amount of time. Um, I want 27 minutes. Okay, I, I, I promise it's going to be a 30 minute video. And this was covering a lot of territory in 30 minutes. So you can see how you can come in here with, with a paintbrush, switch to a little larger brush. And when you're doing your uh, first layer, making a layer in there, you can move right along with a, a larger brush. accomplish um, an area okay lesson learned right here the horse stopped right here I had a 24 by 24 inch canvas I went ahead and just completed drawing this off and have the space over here on the other side of the horse's head okay you'll learn those drawing skills okay I am going to sign off. It's 2843. I'm Carol Abbey Gray in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, painting my carousel horse from Mopemore, France, from a photograph taken many years ago in realism in Baton Rouge. And it's on my YouTube channel. I will be uploading it. Follow me on YouTube. Thank you and like it and subscribe if you want to learn how to paint from a photograph with Carol Abbey Gray.